Hi there, I'm Jamie Taylor. Welcome to Your Health Matters, brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center, your community-owned hospital. Every week on this program, I have a different guest, and we talk about programs, services, things of interest to you and your family. So stay tuned, we'll be back right after these messages with a great guest. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is someone very near and dear to my heart, Claire Crum, who is now officially retired. I can't believe that. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to talk about 30 years of your giving and health care here at KRMC. That's amazing. 30 years, that's a long time. KRMC <laughs> has been very, very good to me. Well, that's yes. a good thing. It's and been a great place to work. Yeah, I'd say it's a partnership. Yes. Because yes. obviously you've given a lot during that yeah. 30 years as well. And you've seen an amazing amount of changes and growth. Yes. Because, I mean, yes. just in my 11 years at KRMC, mm -hmm. I've seen that mm -hmm. kind of growth. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I can't even imagine. Yeah. My, my staff uh, members uh, joked that I was uh, a roommate of Florence Nightingale when we were in nursing school together. That's how now, old I on. am. 30 uh -huh. years is not um, 150 they, well, years. In our department, I'm the, I'm the fossil. <laughs> <laughs> I was the fossil. But yeah, I could run circles jealousy. around everybody and Absolutely. I yeah. made it happen and totally we all did. It was that. a team effort. Right. It was a great team. The hospital, uh, entire hospital, I mean, the collaboration and rapport that all the departments have with one another mm -hmm. are phenomenal. And I think that it just, it's a really a great statement to make for anybody that, that works in healthcare because it, it could be different. But here, uh, I think it's, it's a wonderful place to work. That's great. I have seen a lot of changes. I, um, I just remembered something too. Uh, when we built the, uh, the north end, the south end, the south end had a, uh, a new building planned and it had to go out to the bond had to go out for oh, a bond right, election. Right, yeah. And I was uh, involved politically, and it's the only time in my life I ever have been, because <laughs> it was it went to the general public for election. So we sold t-shirts to all the hospital employees, and I was in the parade, <laughs> Andy Devine Day's parade before, the, uh, before that, and I was down at the polling place where the votes are, the election wow. place. Where to the, encourage yeah. people to vote for well, the bond. Well, not, not to do that, no, oh. but to be down there when the votes were counted. Oh. And after they were finished, my husband and I were down there together, and, and, and there, was the, there was nobody else there but me. <laughs> and I just thought, am I the only one that's excited about this? But it passed, so that was a oh, big deal. Wow. We, and, and the way they, they really got employees involved in that process, in the, um, in the building process, well, we had already done the T-shirts, and everybody was excited mm -hmm. about that. And then we had we had uh, articles in the paper. We had the groundbreaking ceremony where all the board members were there, district board members. That's so cool. When Brian Turney was a very young man. <laughs> was that with the mustache? No, no, that was no, that was because I one. do remember that. He did have I've one. I've seen pictures of him with a mustache. <laughs> and when they finished after the 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 building was up and they were almost finished, they actually had a, a beam. It was the last oh, beam that was to be raised. Right. They painted the whole thing white. They had it on the ground in the construction area, and everybody went out with a sharpie and, and signed, signed it. it. And I so have I have another picture somewhere. of my m myself and uh, Sue Wadsworth was the uh, head nurse at the time of the ICU. And interestingly enough, that beam we signed it at the very end, and that part went right up to our department. Oh. We run the third floor, and it was on the corner. Way cool. So it was really it was very very meaningful to us. I mean I've I mean I know where. I know where nails and screws are in this hospital. I know <laughs> that you're going to say, I, really I know do. where there's like, bodies buried. No, in no, uh, secrets maybe, <laughs> but no. And then after the after the building was completed, we had a formal ribbon cutting ceremony. So uh, we were really very happy about a new ICU. The ICU prior to that had been five beds mm -hmm. in the um, middle of the hospital, and we. There was no room in there. We had daisy chains. The state would come in and say, you can't do this. What? Then they decertified a bed because there wasn't enough room. And that's when oh. the doctor said, we have to do something. So now so is this back, what, in the this early was 80s? In, it was in 80, well, I came back here in 86. 
and it was in the late 80s when all these things were happening. Okay. So it was a very challenging place to work in that ICU because of the space limitations. Well, if you think about it, though, okay, it went from being a county hospital, mm -hmm. and I know this is mm -hmm. prior to you, but it was a county hospital that was getting ready to close its doors mm -hmm. when the first group, High Johnson, Les Byram, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. whole group yes. floated a bond yes. to buy the hospital from the county. Right. Okay. And that history kind of still hangs on in a lot of people's minds sometimes, mm -hmm. I think, because they still have a tendency to think of KRMC as the county hospital. And you and I both know how dramatically the hospital has changed since that time. I mean, we have a whole different group of physicians, mm -hmm. you know, at a different mm -hmm. level. We are Mayo trained sure. docs that are here sure. now. and. Um, and not just them, but I mean all of the doctors that are part of it and our staff that has grown to where we are today is the largest employer in mm -hmm. Mojave County. Mm -hmm. 1,700 mm -hmm. employees we have. Mm -hmm. So how many were there when you were, do you know? Well, you know, I, I thought about this this morning. The, the upside to that is that we have so many different services that we never had before. Right. The downside to it is when I worked here in the 80s, you knew every everybody. single person, knew, no matter what shift you worked, no matter what uh, department you worked, yeah. you knew every Everybody. single person, yeah. Yeah. and um, it was it was a I don't know we, we just we had fun <laughs> together, we partied yeah. together, hearty, and <laughs> we worked hard, yeah. you know, yeah. and so. Uh, and I, I still see some of those people. There were mm -hmm. some of them at my party on Saturday, my retirement party. Yeah. And I, it was just, it's an honor and privilege to have people that have been around so long to come and celebrate that. Right, yeah. Yeah, That's and, a big and, so th and they're still around. I guess yeah. there's a group of retired <laughs> nurses that meets oh, it's every like other week. Oh, now every you other, join. Sure, I know. <laughs> every other week they have lunch together. Oh, it's there social. You go. I'm a social see? girl. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's really, it's a wonderful thing. And then um, after that opened, after the ICU opened in 93, Th there was a real big push for uh, by the cardiologists to open a cardiac cath lab. Right. So uh, in '94, April or September of '94, we opened the first cath lab, and it was a closet. It was uh, <laughs> we didn't know any different though. We right. did. We thought that you was the just, cat's meow. Yeah. We thought that was the end all and be all, and we thought we were doing such great work, which we we started you know doing increasing over time, and then we uh, broke ground for. Uh, there was a renovation uh, by the emergency room. Oh, yeah. And the second cath lab was put over there. We had three outpatient beds. And then that became limiting because we did not, we needed more than three beds. We only had one room though. So uh, over time it was realized, so from, uh, that was 2000. And then in 2007, we, we opened our new incredibly Cardio wonderful Center. cardiovascular center yeah. that is the I think it's the nicest one in the whole state. Nice. It really is. So it's beautifully it's beautiful. done. It's beautifully decorated. It's full of and the most big incredible and closets. <laughs> that's exactly right. And we didn't know. And you know, over time, even that happens. The the doors kind of the walls close in on you. You know, it seems like this huge spacious area, which it was. But then the more stock and and things that we bring mm -hmm. in, um, it just it, it becomes a little more crowded. More and more procedures are able to do. We have a whole room, the third room that was designated to be used later on, and it's filled with stock. Wow. It is filled. I, I really don't know how, so I, I don't know uh, where they'll go from there, but they're very, very busy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a wonderful team. The cardiologists are wonderful to us. They are all great. They're all great people. They're all great uh, physicians. They're very, very qualified. Well, I mean, I have pictures of ribbon cutting ceremonies yes, from that cath lab too. All the, and well, the, it's the stages of growth, yes, like we said at yes. the beginning, where you saw it start with, and you've got a little postcard here of the very first that was Mojave that, General Hospital. That was before anything ever yeah, happened to right? the hospital. So mm -hmm. that, but mm -hmm. this entrance, mm -hmm. I believe, is still the yes. same entrance, it is. right? It it's is. just that the hospital Has grew every in direction. all directions. <laughs> every direction. I think the, the forefathers um, had wonderful uh, vision, vision of, of, of how much space would be needed what, 20, th 20 years down the road or 30 years down the yeah. road? And Actually, we're still 40 now. We're well, still we just had our 30th, mm -hmm. you're right, because we're still expanding. Last year. We're, yep. I mean, the services, uh, who would ever think that in a rural Arizona there would be a special cancer center? Right. I mean, it, it really is phenomenal that we have that. We have so many, um, we have wonderful orthopedics now, mm -hmm. um, new orthopedic surgeons. Um, we Dr. Asher with the Open Heart Program. Oh, my gosh. Isn't he oh, amazing? Oh, my gosh. He is so, he is so wonderful. He's, team oriented. Right. He and is so. all about having a, a backup for every position. I hope that if I my turn ever comes, I don't have to go to Phoenix right. because he was 
on vacation or right. out of you know out <laughs> town, yeah. and that that was what happened before. But it, th I think that's what happens at the beginning of any program. Mm -hmm. You have to learn from uh, what is the best way to do things, and you learn by experience. Right. You really do. And there, as one of my esteemed colleagues once said, there is no shortcut to experience. No, very true. Right? No you shortcut to experience. You have to, to live through it. it and learn it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's yes, awesome. you do. Yes, you do. So. We've talked about how the hospital has changed, but mm -hmm. let's talk about Claire back here for a minute again because now when you came here, you weren't in the cardiology right away, mm -hmm. right? You, right? Did you go in <coughs> intensive care right away? I, well, I had already worked in intensive care. I worked okay. ICU for 20 years, and then when uh, they decided to open the cath lab, they asked a okay. few of us if we would be interested. So uh, initially it was a every other week job, and that's oh. not the best way to <laughs> learn something. That you should experience. do it repetitiously yeah. rather than every other week. So after about a year of that, the other nurse who was trading jobs with me, sharing, um, she decided she did not want to work five days a week. She liked her three 12-hour shifts in ICU. Mm -hmm. So we would work ICU one week, cath lab the other week. Oh, okay. So she went back to ICU, and I stayed in the cath lab full time. And okay. It's a decision that I would, I have never regretted. Oh. I have, my, my love is the cath lab. It is my department, my, it's my cath lab. Mm -hmm. This is my hospital too. Yeah. It really I, is. Yeah. I mean, I, I can see that I'm when a, you. I'm a, <laughs> yeah, I'm a poster child for KRMC. You are, <laughs> really. you are. But now you mentioned that you left and came back. So what's that story about? Didn't you say something about you left? So. No, I was here for 20 years in the cath lab. Not oh. 20 years here in the cath lab. No. I had moved away. I had okay, moved, I'd moved back to Connecticut. Okay. Uh huh. And I had married, um, and that was not successful. Okay. And I moved back to Kingman. Okay. I moved back to Kingman, and my children were here, so we, um, we, you know, I just got a new start at the hospital. Okay. And I worked with Morgan Carroll and Robin Allen and Diane Weinkoop and Michelle Hall. Uh -huh. Some of them are still here. Yep. Yep. And um, we had we had a wonderful wonderful team. We really yeah. did. We and they still are here yeah. in the ICU. So okay. yeah, when I came back and we we had uh, we went from the old to the new, the old ICU to the Thanks. new ICU. We have of course had a party. Yeah. Well, we had a party. We're pretty and good at we having had, parties uh -huh, to celebrate. We, we, right? Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> yes, it's it's all about the food too, isn't it? Oh yes. <laughs> That's yeah. what somebody said on Saturday. It's always about the food with your nurses. <laughs> so yeah, we had a. Uh, we, we, the, the trans, in fact, I remember the name of the patient that was moved from the old ICU to the new one. Oh, you're kidding. No, I remember him, and he said that when he mo was moved to his new room, it was the best sleep he had had the whole time he was in the hospital, because if you can imagine, we had four, five patients, four patients in one room, and any action, so anything like that took ward, place. more yes, than a room. Yes, they didn't they have had taken, private rooms. They had taken two rooms and, and opened them up to, oh to one room, and then there was a doorway to the other room where the other two patients were. Wow. So there was really, there were very few times when uh, a patient was able to have quality sleep. I was just gonna say, or p privacy. Well, Not especially in ICU because everything's beeping and. Right. <laughs> but they were curtains that divided everything okay. instead of walls. Okay. So uh, we moved to the new new ICU and there and and we had an open house and we had all our equipment. Mm -hmm. It was all marked and we had the public come in and it was just very exciting. Because I just think it's really important for people to know mm. what goes on, which is how our cath lab open house has developed and right. grown. Um, people in the hospital had no idea what we did in the cath lab. It was like this big, deep, dark, secret place. <laughs> so you know, we had um, we so started with an open house. We started in our open heart house. Month open heart, house. Mm -hmm. It's during Heart yeah. Month. It will be. I believe it's February 16th this year. It's okay. usually on a Thursday. Uh, we have balloons, we have music, we have <laughs> giveaways, <laughs> and food galore, galore. But every single area in the cath lab, all the little um, areas where patients are, are, um, are, it's like a little television commercial. Every single vendor that we have the, of the, the devices that we use, they so come in there and they show it. their goods, and they show how they're used. Yeah. We have nursing students, medical students, we have hospital employees, the general public, everybody shows up. It's a real party. Yeah. It's a real party. But and it's we, educational at totally. the same time. I mean, we don't want people to think that we just. <laughs> it's, it's an education <laughs> party, celebration. But, yeah. Education <laughs> celebration. It's all about the learning. Too. We actually let people go into the real cath lab room mm -hmm. and so we show them before it. and after pictures. And yes, it's a it's a wonderful day. Very good. Wonderful day. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we can talk about a few other parties I know of. So I hope you'll stay tuned. We'll be back right after these messages. 
shopping and mm -hmm. arts. It's all within driving distance. Exactly. We have the best of both worlds. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is retired RN Claire Crown. Do you like hearing that? It's mixed I'm blessings. not used to it yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm not used to it yet. No. But Claire, no. has you have been an icon. I'm sorry, but I don't mean to make you feel so old. But I mean, <laughs> it's not that you're old, but you've done so much and have been so instrumental in the growth of Kingman and Thank Kingman you. Regional Medical Center. Thank and it's you. been a partnership. I know you talked before the break how you felt the hospital has been very good to you as mm -hmm. well, but mm -hmm. you've been, your fingers have touched so much of this growth at KRMC. And it's so great that you brought these pictures that, you know, kind of just show that history and the stages of growth where we go from this little county hospital that, do you know how many beds they had back there? It was 70? Was it 70? I think maybe at the best. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah, even less. Two floors. To, yeah, to where we are today mm -hmm. with like 235 mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. continuing to look at opportunities for growth. Mm -hmm. It's a never ending process. Never ending. So, but it is very cool. And like I said, you have touched and been a part of so much of that growth. And that's just awesome. I You're have to get wealth. my nose in wherever I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's such a wealth and of information too. I mean, I know over the years, if I have a question about something that when back in the day, <laughs> I can call Claire and you know the answer who I can go to. And that's very exciting. I'll still be involved. I will I I hope so. plan to volunteer after. Good. Uh, I just need a little time off to well, just sure. kind of get used to yeah. the idea that you know, every day is Saturday. I guess yeah. that's what they tell me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, you know, planning to stay very busy. I already have been. You can ask anybody in my family. I right. feel like I feel like I'm still on beat the clock. <laughs> how did I how did I have the time to work to when work. I'm doing all these things? Yes, but, yeah. yeah so I think the one thing that happens when we work is we probably manage time a little better because mm -hmm. we have to be at certain mm -hmm. places at certain times and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we can't be as oh I'll get to that later kind of thing <laughs> maybe uh, I don't know have you seen that yet no my husband has jobs for me oh he has a honey do list oh, in reverse it's yes, usually the wife already. has the oh, he's been retired he's been doing right? his jobs all day all the time <laughs> but he has he has uh oh. you know yeah we've had a few projects that have been halted <laughs> because of the party and have to get finished so uh they'll right. they're on my agenda absolutely uh-huh but I have a feeling we'll be seeing you at the hospital more. No doubt yeah. about it. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt about it. I would not be able to stay away because, yeah. you know, the, um, uh, I actually get <laughs> emotional yeah, yeah. when I think about it because there's so many people here that I love. Mm -hmm. And that love you. It's so, a two-way street. So yeah. I have to make sure so. that I stay in touch. Right. Really and we do. can do a lot more lunches. Really. Weren't you and I talking about that? That you have so many yes. people yes. that you yes. <laughs> owe lunches to. Yes. That it's going to be a social while social life. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. So it'll be a while before you can get that sure. all caught up today. Oh, I know so <laughs> and many I hope people. I'm on your list. Absolutely, no. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, there's no doubt about right. that. I look forward to it. But there again, because of um, all the lives that you've touched and you've seen Kingman grow oh, a lot goodness. too, right? Yes. I mean, in 30 years, oh my yes. goodness, I can't imagine yes. how. Do you know how big Kingman was back in those days? <laughs> well, the I-40 didn't go through the hospital. The hospital is. Oh. And I lived over near there, and I remember the explosions to, when they took down the oh, mountain. Oh, and they, they, right. they, the, To go through the mountain. And uh, there, was, there was no AM, PM across the street. Uh -huh. There was no, uh, I mean, the, the park was the biggest deal in the whole wide world. Centennial when that was Park oh, when that was got phenomenal. built. Phenomenal, phenomenal. <laughs> we used to play softball. The hospital team had a softball team, and it was over on the, on the uh, east, let's see, it would be the southeast corner of the fairgrounds. Okay, okay. There was yeah. one field, wow. and you just waited your turn. Uh -huh. And after it was over, we all went out and enjoyed ourselves. <laughs> There's that party. Can't tell any secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no secrets. <laughs> but don't you find sometimes when you can remember how things were then and then you hear people whine now oh about my. stuff don't you want to go no, no. really no. <laughs> you don't no. know how good well, you have it people have moved here from uh, most of us are transplanted true and Very the people true. that have moved from the large metropolitan areas who are used to having at their fingertips shopping and mm -hmm. arts and things that are that we we don't have it too far away right it's all within driving distance exactly 
So uh, I think we, we have the best of both worlds living where we do. We I really agree, do. Totally. We, That's, Marvin and I say that to our you know folks all the time. Is that what I one of the things I love about Kingman is that, and I know you have this for sure, is the relationships you have. Mm. You run into people you know at Walmart. I know now when I go to San Diego, if I go to a big restaurant and I look around and go, oh. I don't know anybody here, and it seems so weird because I've gotten so used to being able to go to the theater and say, "Oh, hi, how are you?" And the you know, the grocery store and the restaurants, whatever. So, but yet we can get to mm -hmm. San Diego or to Vegas mm -hmm. or to Phoenix if we need that shopping sure. or we need the culture, whatever, sure. and still come home to that small town, sure. which to me is no place like home. No. And, and I think, and I've shared this oftentimes with folks on the show too, that I think that plays an important role in our nursing patient relationship mm -hmm. because the patients you're caring for are people that if you don't already know them, you're more like, you're gonna see them, yes. right? When you send them home, you may run into them at Walmart or the theater. That's what we tell them when they're leaving. We hope to see you again, but not here. Right. I'll see you in the grocery store yeah. usually is where I'll, where I'll tell them, you know, rather than here. And we do have m many patients that I've taken care of through the years. I can't tell you how many times. And, y y you know, I don't, I'm happy that they came to us for their right, care. Right. But I feel sad that they need the care, right. you know, and so we're happy to provide it. But so many people have been, uh, and friends of mine Another that I've taken people. care of, right. and it's it's a uh, it's it's good and bad because uh, you know then you're a little closer than you and right. you know it's more a than harder to be detached. You know, yes, it is. But I <laughs> I I mean I've I've uh, been there and, and enjoyed every minute of it. I, I I just when I look back on 20 years, I can't imagine doing anything else. Right. Because yeah. it was just such a wonderful thing to be able to do. We're we were. We're messing inside people's hearts, <laughs> yeah, and that's are. a very serious thing. It is. And it is. Even though we do it every day, it's not. It's not a, an easy thing for patients. For us, it's it's a natural thing that we love. But there, we do everything Scary we could for to the patients. everything to make yeah. them, you know, to put them to ease. And, right. and then we have those wonderful drugs that we give them, of course, <laughs> that help too. But um, TLC is is one of the best absolutely. medicines on earth. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. And like you, you know, then. You want to give them the very best possible care because you are going to run into them, mm -hmm. hopefully down the road. And so mm -hmm. you don't want them coming up to you yeah. at Walmart going, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no. Instead, you want them to give you a big hug and say, thank you so much kind of thing, and, right? And they expect us to remember who they are, <laughs> oh, too, I'm after sure. one episode. And you're like, okay, what do you look like with a gown on? Yeah. <laughs> and the blue cap. Okay, I, sure, yeah. <laughs> I only see this part of you. So. <laughs> exactly right. So uh, how they remember sometimes, I, uh, I'm amazed well, because some of the medicine that we use cause amnesia and that's oh. a great thing because we don't want them to remember right. sometimes because it's not the most pleasant you know Experience, thing to go right, through yeah. but we make it as pleasant as possible sure. we really do Everybody I didn't even that. realize that though that it kind of helps them forget mm -hmm. it does like it have relaxes. a bad dream it oh. relaxes them and it causes okay. amnesia and um, I have a name for it that I probably wouldn't say out loud oh here. <laughs> It's wonderful, though. Okay, you can tell me later. <laughs> I don't give a darn drug. How's that oh, sound? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it a does. Good I mean, just do whatever you want to me. I don't give a darn after yeah. you get that, and you're just mm. <laughs> <laughs> the happy camper. So, exactly. That's what it's intended for. Oh, that's what it's intended for. And I would for. bet that when you first started, it wasn't quite like that. No. No. Oops. Now we did use some sedation at the beginning, mm -hmm. and there are actually patients that prefer to have none which that's good for them if that's yeah, what they want because yeah. it takes time for that to go out of your system right, you know right. be excreted but it makes it much easier on the people that do need it yeah and most people are very much afraid when they come to us sure very much afraid well they're in a very frightening situation i mean they don't let's face it they don't come to you to have a hangnail clipped no, <laughs> no i call it the twilight zone especially people that have been they're 70 or 80 years old they've never been in the hospital mm. before and, and here they are, w surrounded by people doing things that they're not familiar with, they've right. never had done, and we, you know, still everything we do, we tell them what we're go doing and try to put them yeah. to ease, so it's, Well, yeah. Claire, I am, again, <laughs> no, we won't get emotional, I promise okay. that. But it's okay. been a pleasure to have you Thank on you. the show Thank and you sharing much. all the history that you have here, and I look forward to seeing you at lunch soon. Okay, okay. we'll do lunch. I'm glad you all joined us today. Wipe the tears, it's a good thing. <laughs> I'll see you again next week with another great guest.